Good afternoon, Open Snow Meteorologist Alan Smith here on Wednesday, December 10th, 2025. It's a tale of two air masses currently across most of North America, with unseasonably warm temperatures across the west and below average temperatures across the east. In the west, storms loaded with subtropical moisture have been impacting the northwest this week, bringing rain to most ski areas, <clears throat> while higher elevation resorts in Canada are receiving heavy snow, including Revelstoke. Here's a 24-hour loop showing how the snow has been stacking up at Revelstoke since Tuesday evening, with over a foot recorded in the past 24 hours. Taking a look at the big picture, a strong ridge of high pressure will remain over the west for the next five days, with a deep trough over the eastern U.S., which will favor cold temperatures and multiple snow chances across the Appalachians and New England. In the west, a powerful jet stream tracking along the northern periphery of the ridge will continue to transport subtropical moisture into the Pacific Northwest and Canada, resulting in heavy rain or snow, depending on location and elevation. This is a classic atmospheric river setup that will favor significant precipitation and strong winds across the Northwest. Many areas in Washington are dealing with flooding issues and ski resorts in Washington and across lower elevation BC will also continue to deal with rain issues in this pattern. This loop shows precipitable water anomalies relative to average, which is a measure of atmospheric water vapor. Values will be 200 to 300% of average across the Northwest at times as these moisture plumes hit. Also, you can see the tropical origins of these moisture plumes as they stretch all the way down to Hawaii, which is why you often informally hear these patterns referred to as Pineapple Express. Looking at departure from average temperatures, we can see anomalous warmth expected over the west for the next five days, which explains why many ski resorts in the northwest are getting rain instead of snow. The Sierra and the Central Rockies will also be much warmer than average, but conditions will be drier. Unfortunately, the warmth will not allow for good snowmaking in areas that really need it, such as Tahoe. In the east, temperatures will be much colder than average over the next five days. So we've established that ski areas in the northwest U.S. are mostly going to see rain in this pattern, but there will be snow to be found in this pattern if you head north of the border into Canada and to a high enough elevation. Areas such as Whistler, Big White, Whitewater, Fernie, and Red Mountain have been picking up snow, but are going to see rising snow levels and periods of rain through the weekend as temperatures rise. However, Revelstoke, Kicking Horse, and the Canadian Rockies, including Banff and Lake Louise, will be more resilient to the warmth, though even at Revelstoke, you'll want to stay above Mid-Mountain to avoid any rain issues. Also, far northern BC will see a much colder air mass with heavy snow also expected at places like Shames Mountain and Powder King. Let's take a look at our five-day forecast range charts for Revelstoke, which are projections from individual weather models used in our blend. The top chart shows projected snow levels and the dark blue line indicating the model blended average. On Wednesday, on Wednesday snow levels are projected to be just below mid-mountain before falling close to the base on Friday, but then rising to near mid-mountain on Saturday and Sunday. Keep in mind that Revel Snoke has a 5,600 foot vertical drop and a very low base elevation. In terms of snowfall, most models in our blend are projecting around one to two feet of additional snowfall over the next five days, which is on top of the 20 inches that have accumulated in the past three days. Next, let's take a look at Kicking Horse. In the top chart, you'll notice that snow levels will be lower here relative to its terrain, which ranges from about 4,000 feet at the base to 8,000 feet at the summit. During Wednesday storm, snow levels are generally expected to be near or below the base, and even during the next storm this weekend, snow levels look to be right around the base during the warm part of the cycle on Saturday and Sunday. Total snowfall is also projected to range from 1 to 2 feet over the next 5 days, in addition to the 19 inches that has accumulated over the previous 3 days. Also, Kicking Horse will be opening for the season this Friday. Strong winds aloft and deep moisture with this system will also lead to plenty of snowfall spilling over the Selkirks and Purcells and into the Canadian Rockies with this storm. And colder air over Alberta will feature an overall favorable setup for places like Lake Louise, Banff Sunshine, and Marmot Basin. At Lake Louise, most models in our blend are projecting 10 to 20 inches of snow over the next five days, 
and snow quality will also be better compared to areas further west. We have medium to at times low density snowfall expected during this cycle. The weekend snow quality may be a little upside down as low density fluff on Friday transitions to medium density snow on Saturday and Sunday. Next, let's take a look at the east where ski season is off to a, a fantastic start thanks to a consistently cold temperatures and early season snow. Our snowfall forecast map for the east is also looking good with significant snowfall expected for portions of the Great Lakes, New England, New York, Quebec, and the Mid-Atlantic. Some of the ski resorts favored for the deepest snow totals in the east over the next five days include Stowe, Jay Peak, Cannon Mountain, Tremblant, Kissing Bridge, Mount Bohemia, Seven Springs, and Snowshoe. Looking ahead to next week, we start to see some subtle changes to the stubborn weather pattern that has been in place. The high pressure ridge over the west will begin to flatten and spread eastward, with a more trough dominant signal taking hold over the northwest. This will lead to a continued active storm track across the northwest and northern Rockies, and over time we may see some storms eventually dip further south into the Sierra and the central Rockies as well. The challenge is that the stubborn warmth that has taken hold across the west will not give up easily. Over time, a very gradual cooling trend is expected, but overall temperatures are still expected to be warmer than average. We could still see some rain and snow level issues persist in some areas, including over the Sierra, where a rain event is projected. Above average warmth will also begin to expand into the eastern U.S., though New England will hang on to below average temperatures for a bit longer. Taking a look at precipitation anomalies from the European Ensemble model next week, we see a wet signal showing up across Canada, the Northwest, and even extending as far south as Tahoe. Though keep in mind that storms may favor rain more than snow initially, with a better chance of colder air and lower snow levels later in this period. Utah and Co Northern Colorado may start to get in the game next week as well. As always, be sure to check out our detailed forecast and commentary from our local experts on open snow for the latest. And if you haven't already, be sure to download the app. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that like button if you enjoyed this video.